you know, I gotta, I, I want to get a little bit more into the music, but I gotta ask you something before. Um, well, you so, mentioned Hussein Fado, and you, and you mentioned that you was cool with Pac. Talk a little bit about mm-hmm. Pac, because Pac is like this immortal, immortal figure, and you know, what I mean, we, you know, we can't, we can't hear him talk anymore. So we kind of like live through other people's stories about him. You know, talk a little mm-hmm. bit about me, and Pac, and having a relationship with him. I mean, it's so weird. Again, that was all her because. The first time I met him, I didn't I didn't like his music. I wasn't a fan of him. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I, I just wasn't into what he was doing. You know, and the right. first time I met him, I think we was at Freaknik or something like that, and we was in front right. of a hotel, and we had the 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 CDs of Shiz Real and the little red stickers to my Geronimo shirts and. Mm-hmm. Irv seen him and Irv was like, yo, go give him, you know, your CD and your stick. And I'm like, nah, I ain't doing that shit. That nigga is smoking weed, chilling. I don't want to bother him. Mm-hmm. like, yo, just go right. do it. So I'm like, fuck, all right, I'll go do it. <laughs> so I walk <laughs> over to this nigga. And he, he was cool. I, I ain't even going to say. He was cool. He was smoking his blunt. And I was just like, yo, I know niggas be bothering you, bro. I didn't say, bro, because that wasn't it at the time. Whatever it was. I'm like, yo, I know mm-hmm. niggas bother you, but... This my CD, you know, you don't got to listen to it now. Like, when you by yourself zoning, if you like it, rock it, you know, rep it. That's all I ask. If you don't like it, throw the shit out, my nigga, and you never hear from me again. Same shit I told mm. the DJ. Right. And the nigga was smoking the blunt. He looked at the CD. He scrutinized it. <laughs> but I could tell mm. he was going to, I could tell by the way he was looking at it, like he was going to give it a shot. So he was just like, all right, cool. And we gave each other a pound. I got back in the MPV. Or it was like what he said. I was like, he ain't really shit. I gave him the music. He bopped his head. He's smoking his weed. He cold. Right. And as fate would have it, you know, we met a little while after that because people that we were this plugged This was death row clock or, or, or pre-death This was... This was right before Death Row Pop. Okay. This was right before Death Row Pop. And yeah, then, okay. um, then we ended up going to the Source Awards and people in Queens that we, that's like family to us, they was cool with Pop. You know, mm-hmm. so when he would come out here, you know, it would be our people that was, you know, they was on yeah. point with, you know, so we met through that. And then, um, I know exactly what you're I never about. forget. And I never forget we went to some it was some shit like at the Hammerstein ballroom or, or one of them big places in the city and it was some of them mm. I remember like it was like the first industry thing I ever went to in my life. So I'm all nervous and intimidated and shy and I'm not really talking to people and I'm just I'm just amazed at just watching all the activity and all the people talking and moving around and drinking and all this other shit. I'm just, it's just all blowing my mind watching all these people. And some girl came up to me and said something and I ran back and we was with Pac. There was a lot of us together, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. and I went up to Pac and I was like, yo, you got a pen? This chick just blah, blah, blah. And and he just grabbed me by my neck and laughed. And he was like, nigga, you don't need no pen. And he's like, just have fun, Mike. Just do what I'm doing. Just follow my lead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the whole night, he got me bugging out with him. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's what all is. Once you're in the door, I guess this is how it all is, huh? So, you know, we got cold and that herb would tell me that, you know, through mutual people we knew, he'd be like, yo, Pac asked about you. He asked how you doing and all that shit. I'm like, where are you? Cool, dude. Are we all right? And then, um, so we would talk through other people at first. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then one night in particular, um, I think this like pretty much the night with, I guess we decided like we was all right with each other in our books. Like, um, we was in the tunnel and it was, um, it was me, Gotti, my man BJ, Stretch, God bless the dead, was with us, Madge, mm-hmm. and like maybe two other people from Queens. And we all in the tunnel, 
And, you know, all the hitters, they, they must have been talking about whatever they were talking about, which didn't concern, you know, us. You know, we mm-hmm. like that it wasn't our wasn't our business. So we like, so Pac wanted to smoke weed and he wanted to walk around the tunnel. So I told Stretch, I was like, um, me and my brother going to take this nigga, you know, to the, the back area of the tunnel. Like, there used to be an area by the stage where it's like mirrors and you could go behind there and sit down yeah, yeah, and no smoke doubt. your weed with him. So I was like, you know, we're going to take him over there or he just wants to walk around and see shit. And it's funny because, you know, when we first walked up, we didn't do the, oh, shit, my nigga, we ain't do none of that. We just did the light dab on each other, like, yeah, what up, what up? You got some weed? Right. Cool. All right, cool. Let's smoke. So we did that. <clears throat> and so me and my brother and Pac, we start walking away, and the rest of them is over at the bar. You know, the main bar in the tunnel when you come in, like, through the entrance. They was there mm-hmm. talking. So um, we walked in there. Pop pulls his weed out, and the nigga bumped the nigga, and the weed fell out of the, the Philly. It fell out, like, on the floor. And mm. um, I couldn't tell if it was intentional or not, because I didn't see the whole the right. whole thing go down. I just saw the part when the weed hit the ground. And, like, I looked at Pac, and he, he was like, he had this look on his face like an aggravated look and I was like, Yeah, don't worry about that, nigga. Like we got we got we so don't worry right. about it. So we <laughs> we walking a little further and he pulls more weed out. And he starts to refill another Philly and here come another nigga bumps the nigga but this time I seen him. So I saw it was deliberate. I saw the nigga de- de- deliberately bumped in the room to make mm. the weed fall out. The weed falls on the ground, and now we're in that area, sort of that hallway with all those mirrors on it, where you can kind of like lean on them and mm-hmm. you can put your drink. Like they were like mirrors with like little tables that came out, sort of where you could place things on them. So I saw the whole shit, and I see the weed fall, and I'll never forget the nigga face. The nigga had a face like like he was just tired, like it was more of a a submission, like I'm so tired mm. of this shit face, and that shit got to me, Indeed. and it made me mad. And when that happened, then I took the point. I walked in front of Pac and I told him, I was like, "Yo, get behind, get between me and my brother." And my brother was behind him; he was in between us. I was in the front, and I was like, "Yo, don't worry about the shit. Like the shit that made me that mad, but." I forgot all about, I didn't give a fuck he was from the West Coast. I didn't care right. if he was the best. I, I saw what happened, and it made me mad. So I'm like, you don't right, worry right. about nothing. So finally we get to the area the, the behind the stage, and he's leaning on that table shit, getting ready to roll up again. And I see, now I see the niggas getting ready to walk towards us to do the same shit. So before they even get to us, I get in front of Pac, and he's rolling the weed behind me, and my brother is behind him. And the niggas come up, and they get ready to do shit again. So I put my arm out, like I put my hand out, my fist closed, to stop the niggas from walking. So I kind of like did a, a quick jab in the kid's chest. Hmm. And I was like, yo, why y'all niggas fucking with this dude? And it turned out the kids was from Brooklyn or whatever. And he's like, yo, Mike, you know all that West Coast shit. I was like, listen, this nigga's not bothering any fucking body. Mm. The next nigga that bumps this nigga, I'm fucking you up. I'm fucking mm. you up. And then all them niggas that's on the right-hand side of that bar in the front of the door, they gonna fuck you up. And I don't mm. give a shit about who you know on the left side of this bar. Don't bump this nigga. Like I lost it. I was, I was mad. I lost my, and um, wow. And the niggas backed up. They let they left well enough alone, and we smoked, and we was cool from that point on. And I think wow. he was my first example of. You see people all the time. You might watch videos and see artists, and you decide whether you're into this shit or not. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It was the first time I met somebody, and I was like, yeah, but the person you see on TV might be 
somebody you cool with if you get to know them. Right. And I remember saying that shit to myself, and I was like, you know, like, he was cool. I guess he told whoever we was with what we did, and then from there we got cool. So we actually was at the point where we was going to start working together, which was cool with Irv because Irv always wanted me to do a record with Pop. Right. And and not only that, like I said, the people that we was tied into, he was tied into. Right. So it was kind of a this this weird shit get weird talking about shit. You know what I mean? It was kind of right, a, right. If they sat at that table and they said this, then they told us and we did that. You right, understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah definitely. We had we had all these other things and other people that were working on things that none of us knew. And that fell right into the mold of everything. And then not long after that, that's when one of our people had came back from L.A. And they was like, you know, um, how would you feel about signing a Death Row East? And we were like, what do you mean Death Row East? And they pulled the shirt out. And they was like, here, this yours. You're going to be on mm. Death Row East. Wow. Like, you going to be the first artist on Death Row East from New York. Wow. Damn, and Mike, I didn't know how to, Yeah, but I didn't know how to feel about that because, like I said, it was tension. You know what I mean? And, and I didn't want to get caught up in all of this shit that was bigger than me. You understand what I'm saying? But I kind of was in a catch-22 because I was around who I was around. You understand? So it wasn't nothing I could really do about it. But all of that helped to cultivate our relationship. And then when I met Fatal, it was just natural. I hate using the word again, but it was because I already was cool with Pac. And I guess actually Fatal's brother recently is the one who made me understand how much they had love for me because I just spoke to Fatal's brother not too long ago and he's like man the mm-hmm. niggas loved you like they respected wow. you and they would talk about you and they loved you I just want you to know that and I was like 